We got a big winner joining us right here. It's Michael right. Wilson, six foot three standout rookie for the Arizona Cardinals. Longtime favorite of this program here. <laughs> Mike, how we doing? Thanks for I'm jumping on. Thanks for the opportunity to come on. Mike, first time in Las Vegas? You've been here before. First uh, Well, first time as an adult. <laughs> I, I used to, <laughs> it's a big change. It's a big change. I used to come here pretty much every summer for uh, like AAU basketball tournaments yeah. as a young kid. Um, so I think the last time I was here, I was probably 12 years old. Um, but yeah, haven't been here since. Wow. So I, I got to think about this guy in the, on the hardwood, Michael Wilson. <laughs> no. What, what kind of game do you have? I wasn't too bad. I was. I, the problem is when you do both, mm -hmm. it's hard to really become a skilled basketball player. Yeah. Because yeah. that's a truly a skilled sport, and you have to work at it all the time. But if you take off four months out of the year, every single year, to play football, and you don't touch a basketball. It's hard to build upon and stack days and get better as a, as a basketball player. So I was more of an attacking, like an attacker, a slasher, and a, a guy that played defense and got rebounds okay. and all that. But were you, so you were you nice with it though? I played varsity. <laughs> I played varsity as a freshman. Okay. Um, sure. And then I was all league my senior year. So I mean, I was pretty I mean, good. This guy. It was, was, well, was, was kind of hard to be I, good. I was getting a little interest in schools. <laughs> I was getting some interest in schools. Yeah, he, he high points those footballs like those rebounds once upon a time. <laughs> so you you attack basketball. You attack your rookie year. Let's let's turn the clocks back like I don't know like nine months okay and we were covering the team and training camp in the off season and we were excited about your arrival but we tempered our expectations so yeah. we just you know let you know the older receivers they're going to get their time and no 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 out of training camp it was like no the best receiver on the team potentially is the rookie receiver out of Stanford and yeah. Michael Wilson talk me through what was presented to you by Gannon and the coaching staff because you know we were told through the media hey all the jobs are up for grabs but mm -hmm. is that ever really true for you to go out and take a starting job yeah. as a third round rookie like how does that happen so I'm gonna I'll get into that but I want to talk about my arrival to Arizona first okay let's do that <laughs> So that when me and my agent were going through the draft process and, you know, a couple of weeks, you we say, OK, this team could take you here. This team would take you here. And I think my draft selection was anywhere between 75 to 125. And it could go as high as like 150 or something like sure. that. But we were expecting me to go in somewhere in the top 100 yeah. past 75. And we never one time picked the Arizona Cardinals. <laughs> like we never one time talked about the Arizona Cardinals drafting me. And honestly, quite frankly, that was the worst interview I'd ever did was with the Arizona Cardinals. At the combine? Uh, it, was with, it was with Drew Terrell over Zoom. Okay. And a lot of times when you do interviews with, with teams, they show good plays and maybe one or two bad plays and say, you know what happened on this play? They'll show a bad effort play or a drop pass or you getting locked up at the line of scrimmage. I, when I, I kid you not, every single clip that he showed me over that, that Zoom meeting was a bad play. And I was like... This is a Stanford guy. This is a Stanford guy. Every single play was a bad play. It was me losing at the line of scrimmage, me dropping a pass, me missing a block. And in my head, I'm like, if I was watching this of myself, I wouldn't draft me. So they're definitely <laughs> not going to draft me. But he said what, what helped was he said I took accountability for everything. Yeah. And he said he does that a lot of times because he wants to see if guys are going to deflect blame and say, well, no, the ball was wobbly. That's why I dropped it. Mm -hmm. Or... Uh, I ran the wrong route because, or no, nah, everyone else is running the wrong route. I'm running the right route. Mm -hmm. Or I missed the block because X, Y, and Z. You're blaming it on everything else. But yeah. I, he said I took the blame for everything. And so he said that, w that went a lot into it. And then to get to your, the question you asked about coming in and being able to grab a spot, I think, yeah, every, every spot is always up for grabs. Um, and I think with some teams more than others, there's less spots up for grabs. But I think having an entire new you know regime new head coach new gm new offensive coordinator new defensive coordinator i think that was really true um and especially we had a young team too with not a lot of seasoned or proven veterans um but i think they did a good job of putting me in positions to succeed and make plays during practice and i just try to you know come in every day and earn the trust of everyone and that just what that looks like is just operating at a high level, showing up on time, um, being presentable in meetings, acting like a professional, being articulate, you know, yeah. not doing all the little controllable things. And little controllable things is like not, not busting plays. That's mental. That's preparation. Mm -hmm. um, you know, a lot of times you can't control certain, like, whether you win a one-on-one. -on -one. Like, sometimes you're going to lose. But all the little controllable things like effort, being accountable, being a professional at all times, I, I think I turned those in my favor. And over time, 
just naturally being a good football player, you're going to make plays. And yeah. I think I made enough plays during camp. And I think that, along with my preparation and my accountability, I think won me the job. As we kind of stay in that, that time frame, what was kind of your first interactions with your head coach, Jonathan Gannon? First interactions with him. He called me, you know, when I got drafted and said he thinks this is a great scheme for me and he thinks I'm going to be a, a big time producer for this offense. Mm -hmm. um, obviously, that comes with me having to earn it. But yeah. and I do think it's a good scheme for me. I think, you know, our, our offense is it's built off the run game yeah. and they want guys who are going to come in and who want to block and take pride in blocking. And I think that's a, another reason why I think I, you know, had a plus in my favor to yeah. win me the starting job is I love to block and I think just being a team first guy and doing everything the coaches are asking me to do. And so, like I said, with our offense being so built off the run game, that mm -hmm. frees up play action, that frees up run action. I think we do so much stuff with like the Z receiver coming in and inserting behind the tackle and the tight end, digging mm -hmm. out safeties. And if you want to do that, that's coaches love players who yeah. want to do that. And I take pride in doing that. And so I think you pair, you marry that with my ability to win one on ones and make contested catches. And I think I'm I think I can be a starter for here as long as I want. Yeah. You know, at the Senior Bowl, it was the first time that I I had heard about like the level that you could get to. Mm -hmm. uh, Jim Nagy at the Senior Bowl said mm -hmm. that you were the best wide receiver there, hands down. wasn't even close, and whoever was going to draft you was going to get a steal. Yeah. You were ham you were hampered by injury in college uh, a little bit this year too. Yeah. But when you got injured this year, how did you how did you kind of maneuver around that based on your previous history with injuries? Yeah, it was it was a tough pill to swallow because I know. That, that was like the major knock. Okay, Mike's good, but can he stay healthy? Yeah. Can yeah. he stay healthy? Can yeah. he stay healthy? And I understand that. And so that, that definitely put a lot of pressure on me coming into the season. Like, I just have to finish the season healthy because I know when I'm on the field, I know I'll produce and be a productive starter in the NFL. Um, so it was, it was extremely hard, and I, and I wasn't anticipating missing four games. Yeah. Um, the injury that I had was a little bit more serious than we had, we had thought. I ended up having to get a shot. And so uh, it was it was hard, but ultimately I had to go back to the drawing board. I've been hurt four years in a row, so it's something that I'm not doing right, mm -hmm. which is leading to injuries. And I think I'm I'm obsessed this year with trying to find a way to tweak a little bit something in my preparation. Maybe it's I'm not. Maybe I'm too lean. Maybe I need to put in a little bit more body fat. Maybe I'm overworking myself, and that's the reason why my body can't last over a certain amount of time, a certain period of time. But it, it's, you know, I have to take account, accountability for that, and um, I'm working extremely hard to figure that out. But it, it was hard. It with, was hard. With, with the other players on the roster, you know, when you get to the NFL level, like a lot of dudes aren't drinking soda and eat, yeah. you know, eating chicken wings every single right. night like in college. You know, <laughs> yeah. get a little sloppy because you're young. Yeah. Uh, you know, what, when you were going through that, you know, what kind of advice were people was were where are the players giving you yeah. in terms of like how to take care of yourself to try and prevent injuries such as that? Yeah, I don't, I don't want to <laughs> sound, but I, I think guys say I need to loosen up a little bit. And that was a thing, like maybe I'm too clean with my diet and I need to add a little bit more body fat so I can. Let's get some of these wings yeah, over we here. Just yeah, we can do it. Get some, get some <laughs> snacks from Circle K. They got, yeah. they got a great snack selection. But, uh, I, yeah, I've been hearing that a lot of times. Like, Mike, you got to loosen up. Like, yeah. you got to eat. You know, sometimes it's good to have some wings and fries once yeah. in a while. Yeah. And I think me being so concerned about being perfect with my process and everything I think it sometimes can backfire yeah. and I think it's been backfiring in my face so I think so I'm this year I'm, I'm taking it a little bit easy and not being so obsessive with I got to be six percent body fat I got to be seven percent body fat I have to get this amount of hours of sleep I just got to listen to my body and have a little bit more body fat because I think that if you look at most guys in the league they're not super chiseled and ripped up like a like a bodybuilder and so I mean a lot of us think that Stanford guys overthink things anyway so. exactly <laughs> exactly it's in my it's in my nature <laughs> one of the things I thought was a big testament to you over the course of July into January you played with four quarterbacks yeah. as a rookie from Colt McCoy who you spent most of the offseason with yeah and then he's gone mm -hmm. and you're hanging with Clayton Toon with the first and the second <laughs> team webs here comes Joshua Dobbs <laughs> yeah. and you're having big time performances against San Francisco and then Kyler Murray helps you finish the season yeah talk to me about what that was like because I think it's a testament of especially a rookie to come in and play with four different signal callers was that tough for you just like I got to learn cadences all over for these guys yeah it's definitely tough. It is, but at the end of the day, you're expected to perform at a high level. And at the end of the year, when everyone's looking at your stats and your production, that no one takes into consideration 
play with Josh Dallas, play with Clayton Toon, play with Cole McCoy. <laughs> we know. We know what <laughs> happened. But, but uh, yeah, it, it is difficult, but it's the NFL. Yeah. Right? And you have to be adaptable. You have to learn how to play with whoever because it's so hard to stay healthy. And it's hard to play with one quarterback at for the whole season. Yeah. Like, a lot of times, guys are going to miss one or two games here and there. Um, but, yeah, it was hard. You just have to – I mean, the offense is the offense, right? The timing is the timing. Certain quarterbacks have to get a feel for your – all our route system and all, and all our route trees off steps. Yeah. It has nothing to do with yards. So if we, if we run a curl, we don't go at 12 yards. We go off your fourth outside step. Hmm. The problem is is that my fourth outside step and Greg Dorch's fourth outside step and Hollywood Brown's fourth outside step might get us plus or minus a yard right. deeper or shorter. And so – it just takes time with the quarterback to know, okay, Mike's fourth outside step is going to hit at 12 yards, and his break point is going to probably be around 13, 14 yards when he starts heading back to the quarterback. We're talking about a core route. Yeah. While Greg Dortz, being a shorter guy, his fourth outside step might land him at 10 and 11 yards, yeah. and now he'll start to finish his deceleration at the 13-yard and come back to the quarterback. And so those small, minute details play a big factor in with it being a completion or with it not being a completion. And I think the whole thing with, like, Kyler being off with the, with the receivers early in the season yes. was just a product mm. of not having enough reps to work on that specific timing. Well, let me ask you about that because you finished the season with maybe your best game, almost yeah. 100 yards against Seattle. Mm -hmm. And it's just like, oh, man, Kyler and Michael got it going yeah. on. How, how exciting was that? But then also disappointing, like, oh, man, we got to wait nine more months right. to get this back going. It was really exciting. I, and I wouldn't, I wouldn't say it's disappointing because that – I feel like that's almost expected yeah. a little bit. Like, I kind of expected that because when he came back, I got hurt. Yeah. So, and then when he was working back, he was only working. And while Josh Dobbs was, was the quarterback, he was taking scout team reps. So we would only have a they – would, they would build in a, a five-minute period where the starting receivers would run routes with Kyler during, like, a special teams period. But five minutes here and there is not doing much. And so uh, – <clears throat> It was good that we finished on that note because it's like, okay, this is what it should look right. like from here on yeah. out. And there was a point where I was getting frustrated with myself because I've said this before, but Kyler's someone you want to play super good for because he has a pedigree of winning and he's only won wherever he's went. Being not losing a game in high school, Heisman Trophy winner in college, multiple Big 12 championships, number one overall pick, Heisman, I mean, uh, rookie of the year, brought the Arizona Cardinals to the playoffs. Like, he expect guys around him to play at a high level. And I wasn't doing that at the beginning, but it was just, I'm like, man, I'm trying my best. Like, something's not right. And then we had the, you know, the miscommunication, which is ultimately my fault against the Eagles. And I'm like, golly, some, like, they need to bench me at this point. Something's not going right. <laughs> yeah. and then, but they didn't. But they didn't. Yeah. And that's, that's why I got a lot of respect for him because, you know, I think we were 0 for 8 at that point. So he targeted me eight times in two games. Or the, the San Francisco game, the, yeah. the Bears game, I had seven targets between those two games, and that Philly game was my eighth target and had no catches. But for him to keep going back with me and us to finish up the season the way it did is a testament to him, you know, believing in a young, a young guy like me. He could have been like, man, you know, screw that cat. Coaches, I don't want him to play for me anymore. But, you know, he, he stayed with me. So I'm forever indebted for him for that. And to be able to end the season we did and knowing that, okay, this is what it can look like between us when we're firing and, yeah. and firing on all cylinders. Like, I texted him after the Philly game. I'm like, bro, I really appreciate you for sticking with me, and I know it was, it was tough uh, for, for a minute there, but just know I, I'm, I really want to play well for you, and, you know, I'm going to do whatever it takes to make sure I'm performing at a high level on game day. Awesome. Yeah, you what go, was, you go two, response. two point from what what was was his, his response? response? Yeah. He said, don't worry about it, bro. It, it, it's the NFL. That happens. We're going to be straight from here on out. Awesome. That's we, awesome. We've heard that we, we don't get privy to those uh, to the live practices when you guys are going, uh, but we heard the scout team stuff was pretty legendary. Is that, is that true? Yeah. I Kyler mean, scout? <laughs> he just does things that, like, most – guys can't do he's, you don't go number one overall overall yeah. win the yeah. Heisman Trophy if you're just a guy yeah <laughs> so he's got natural natural talents that only a couple guys possess like arm strength arm talent uh, athleticism it's just it's just different to watch yeah like I'm when you see a first round pick it's like you know right away that's a first round pick mm -hmm. like it 
you're, you're able to tell and, and spot that from a mile away. He's one of those guys you can tell right away. Yeah. How, how much uh, time are you, you two going to spend in the offseason working together? You know, uh, we would talk to Trey McBride yesterday. He said, he, you know, that's a goal of his is to get together with Kyler in the offseason and work on the chemistry. Well, what about you? Yeah, 100 percent. I think, you know, coming up here when everyone starts back training and really mm -hmm. getting in the groove, getting ready for OTAs, Hopefully we can get it. I, I do my offseason training in Los Angeles with the guys that did my combine training with. But he said that we're going to have multiple weeks or weekends, what have you, to come to Arizona to train um, and just work on that timing and chemistry because that's everything in the NFL. Like, it's not always going to look like two yards of separation. If you have a half a step on a guy, that's that's enough to make a throw. We got to complete those. So we got to uh, just take every opportunity we have to build chemistry and then I think Kyler's going to spearhead that and he's just going to let everyone know hey show up here at this time and we'll get it in. You know I'm an emotional guy and <laughs> <laughs> birth of my kids big day <laughs> I had a dream the other day and it was fast forward next fall okay. oh, and wow. I, I get emotional thinking about this and it's, and it's Kyler under center okay. and it's Michael Wilson <laughs> on one side yeah. and it's a certain Columbus wide receiver <laughs> on the other side in Marvin Harrison Jr. <laughs> In all seriousness, do you do you keep up with this stuff? I mean, Cardinals have the fourth pick. Yeah. We're hoping some quarterbacks go ahead and push push some talent down. Yeah. I mean, what would it mean to play with, with Marvin in Arizona next year? Yeah, obviously, I mean, that's out of my place. But speaking on the opinion of me being able to get to play with Marvin and add it to, you know, a already talented receiver room, and hopefully, yeah. you know, we can they can figure out a way to bring back Hollywood because I think Hollywood's a really special player. But to have – another guy especially a, a like you said a generational talent like Marvin I would be super thrilled to play with him because you need multiple weapons in the NFL to win yeah and I think having a guy like that who appears to be a, a bona fide superstar in the NFL he's got all the traits to succeed like I would I, I'm a, I would be in year two but he'd be I'm looking at hey bro like <laughs> I'm looking at you what yeah. like how do you yeah. how do you win so consistently if you Heisman Trophy winner, multiple thousand yard receiver yards, and like, how do you do it? Yeah. And so I'm, I always am looking at ways of how, what makes guys good. And obviously he's got all the elite traits. He's gonna run fast. He's strong. Like he's tall. He's got great ball skills. But I'm interested to see how he works mm -hmm. because you don't get that good without. You gotta have talent, obviously. But to have to have that much success and that sust sustained success. You have to be a worker. Yeah. And so I've heard he's a jug maniac uh, yeah. as well as I am. So I, I love being partnered and paired with guys who truly love the game and, and put the work in. And I think it makes it special when not only is someone talented, but you see the, the work they put in and it yeah. pays off. Um, and so, I mean, I would love to learn from him and be able to see what makes him so good. I think it would be really special. Yeah. Is, is Paris Johnson not gassing him up every day? Is he what? Is he not gassing him up every oh, day? Oh yeah, he was. Yeah, he's, <laughs> he always gets. Every time he he talks about an Ohio State guy, he's got nothing but good things right. to say. That, you said you're a jugs maniac. How many balls are you catching after practice? So throughout a day, I'd probably catch at least. Oh, I catch 110 after every practice. Wow. But throughout the day, I'm always trying to hold the football and just get my hands on the football. But yeah, 110 from two. The only day I don't catch jugs are are Mondays and sun, and Sundays, obviously. So you torched Sam Fran for two touchdowns. <laughs> and, you know, I'm, I can't stand the Niners anyway, and they're in the Super Bowl. But, like, what specifically were you able to do to isolate yourself and make those plays in yeah. Santa Clara? Because, you know, people have trouble with their defense, especially in the second half. Mm -hmm. And the Cardinals, you and Joshua Dobbs, yeah. they really lit it up that day yeah. and, and made that game incredibly competitive and close. I think it really comes down to just opportunities. Yeah. Um, and I think that's really what the NFL is, is just – you know, I was able to get seven targets the game, that game. I don't think that the game plan warranted that. It was. Did just, you catch all seven, by the way? Yeah. Yeah. Seven. Yeah. Seven for seven. Pretty yeah. good. Um, but I really think it was just it was just ops yeah. and just getting catchable balls that I'm able to get my hands on and make plays. And I think, you know, throughout the season, I think if you go look at the tape and look at, you know, the facts and stats, when a ball was catchable for me, I more than likely came down with the ball. Yeah. And I think that game just presented itself as a game where I just got a lot of, a lot of targets and I was able to make the play happen. I don't like happen like that. Like the two minute drive actually coincidentally enough that, that two minute drive when I had my second catch I had like a 40 yard catch. Oh I remember it down the side. Uh, you down mentioned the, trust with that though. Down, down the sideline. <laughs> like I wasn't even supposed to be on that play. Yeah. We had just 
prior to that throwing a deep ball to Hollywood. Mm -hmm. And Hollywood was tired because he just ran, you know, full speed route yeah. for 50 yards and they missed on it. He ran an inside go or uh, in, inside release uh, takeoff and, and Josh threw it, just barely missed it. So he signaling to Drew to Terrell, like, hey, I need to play off. And I was the backup X behind Hollywood. So I go to X. ZP comes in at Z. Yeah. We get the play. Okay, this is the play. It's trips right. Mike's a single receiver. I have a double move. I stutter and go. And he threw me the ball. And I'm the number one read. Yeah. And I just made the play. But going into a game plan, that technically is not supposed to be my ball, if that makes sense. Yeah. Like, it'd be, I'd be the Z receiver, and Hollywood would be the X receiver running that route. But, like, and I, so that just is kind of an example of how it's all about, it's just about opportunities. And when you do get that opportunity, it's about making the play. And that, that game was just, I just got more opportunities than I did others. Well, hey, man, I, listen, your, your, your career's just now starting off. And, uh, you know, the next steps, uh, you know, sometimes you ask guys about goals, and I, I don't really think goals are really a realistic thing. I think it's more of like what kind of things do you want to try and achieve as you go along in your career? Yeah. Um, you know, have you identified some weaknesses in maybe your game that you want to try and strengthen up? Weaknesses, yeah. I think obviously creating separation is always going to be a focal point at the, you know, with playing receiver. And I, uh, another thing is just being a guy that can – continually make contested catches and having great ball skills. And I think those two things are more important than any other metric you can have, whether it be it speed, strength, explosion. It's about creating separation and having the ball skills to bring in passes. And I think you've seen that. Like Puka, I did my offseason training with Puka Nakua during the combine. We trained at the same place with the same receiver coach, same strength and conditioning place. Puka's not, if you were to watch Puka run routes, we are all go to a field with 10 NFL receivers and we were to watch Puka run routes, you wouldn't single him out and say, okay, that's, that's one of the best receivers in the league. Yeah. You'd probably say, uh, he's okay. But the fact that he gets a lot of opportunities and he's great at making the catch and he's strong and, cre and cre can create separation, it might not look the prettiest, mm -hmm. but he can create separation and he's, he's an excellent receiver because he brings in, he, his, he has excellent ball skills yeah. too, mm -hmm. yeah. right? But he's not like he's running four or three. And I think a lot of times we all, get caught up in, well, this guy runs a 4-3, this guy's running a 4-4, but having ball skills is the most important thing, and I think Puka's a testament to that, because we ran around the same 40 time, but he's, you know, a top five receiver in the NFL. For sure. At least stats-wise. But, I, yeah, definitely, so ball skills, that's why the jugs are so important, mm -hmm. because no one, nothing frustrates fan bases or GMs or coaches more than drop passes. Yeah. yeah. And I think th that's going to happen once in a while, but when it's continually a problem, like, that's when it's like, okay, we need to get someone else who can, who can do this. Do you get a sense, like, you and, Tr and Trey McBride and the younger players feel the sense of urgency for 2024? Like, because this year very much people knew the expectations with this team. Wasn't favored in any games this year. I thought played well above your weight class in a lot of contests. And now it's like, okay, we got K-1 back. We're going to add a bunch of players in the draft and free agency. Like, do you guys think about, okay, yeah, we should be a playoff team next year? I think that's the standard, yeah. I think I don't I don't know that we have an excuse as to why that wouldn't be what we need to achieve. Yeah. At, now that our whole regime has, is in their second year, Monty's in the second year, our whole rookie class is in their second year. Kyler's hopefully going to be fully healthy for a full season, and I think if we had him for a full season and a full off season, like we're in most of the there's only Absolutely. about two games that we actually got beat pretty bad which was the browns and then the second time we played the niners yeah and some pretty good teams and those are pretty good yeah. teams yeah those are playoff teams and those other games if four or five plays swing our way like we hopefully we're not having this conversation next year because right. we'll be getting ready to play in, in the super bowl but i think i think that's that should be the standard and the goal and i know jg's committed to that and that he made a point of that um last year he said this is the last time i'm I'm playing a meaning a meaningless game in January. Yeah. We we James said yesterday James Conner joined us and said he he FaceTimes Kyler Murray every day and they're talking about the future of the team and, and they feel that it's bright. Have you have you gotten into the Kyler Murray FaceTime rotation? I'm not in the Kyler Murray <laughs> FaceTime rotation, but I'm in the texting rotation with okay. Kyler. Um, we t we've, we've texted a couple times this off season and uh, I checked up on him. I said I just texted him, shot him a text last week. How you doing, bro? Such and such has the body feeling. He's like, man, I'm doing good. Yada yada yada. He's, and then he said, I'm tired. This is the last time I'm watching. This was the week that the 
Lions were playing San Francisco. Uh -huh. Yeah. And he said, man, I'm tired of watching these teams play. Like, we're going to be here next year. And Hell so yeah. he made a point to throw that in the in the text message. So I know he's. Guy's just a he's, winner. He's, he's a, winner. a winner. Yeah, he's a winner. And I said, history re repeats itself. And yeah. if I'm betting on a guy who's won everywhere he goes, I think it'd be a safe bet to say Kyler Murray's the guy that can take the Cardinals to you know, to the promise line. Are we're, you emotional right now? I am. <laughs> Listen, we're, this is a winning podcast today because yeah. of the gentleman to my right. Tell yeah. us what you got going on with Circle K. So, yeah, I partnered with Circle K during, throughout the season, and uh, I'm not, I wasn't a big caffeine drinker until I got to the NFL, but, like, the days are just so long. Yeah. You know, being there from 6 a.m. to 5 p.m. damn near every day. Mm -hmm. Like, you got to have some type of energy drink mm -hmm. or coffee or caffeine to, to keep you going, and, you know, I was able to partner with Circle K and that, Somewhere I grab my coffee every morning before I start the day. You, you got you'll, you'll two on each side of the facility. I mean, you got <laughs> it right there in Tempe. Exactly. You'll forever be a part of our inner circle, man. <laughs> All right. We wish you nothing but the best of luck. Yeah, thank you guys for coming on the show. Thank you so much. Yeah, appreciate you guys. Yeah.